Today we've got the Ronin 4D in the studio along with the new 8K gimbal. So as you might expect, I have quite a few test results to share with you. However, for disclosure, you should know that I was originally hired by DJI to do some lab testing for them on this new sensor. Afterwards, I asked if it would be okay to share my results in a video and they agreed, but because of that earlier transaction, this is not gonna be a full review and instead just a straightforward interpretation of the data I collected. Starting with everybody's favorite, dynamic range. But first, let's go over the test setup. So you can swap out from this part up, which includes the gimbal for this, which this would be the X9 8K, the Zenmuse X9 8K, which refers to the gimbal as well as the new sensor that's inside the top part. And you can also swap out the mounts on this. As you can see here, I'm actually running a Sony E-mount. It comes originally with the DJI mount for the aerodynamic lenses, but you can put on E-mount, as you can see, if you want to run your Sony glass. This is basically what we're talking about is just this part when we are referring to the new gimbal or the 8K gimbal. It's this component here. Now this is actually the 6K gimbal in the 8K box because the 8K gimbal is already on here. Now I do want to go over a couple of the settings here because I think it's important to the test results, but also I know I said this isn't a full review and it's not, but I do really like this interface. This is the first time I've used the 4D. It's just a really simple, big touch screen, push buttons. It's all very logical. Good job on the user experience in that regard. You can adjust your image sharpness all the way down to minus two and plus two, but more importantly, your noise reduction as well, down to minus two and plus two. By default, they're both set to zero. And I think if I don't mention it, that's probably how it was shot, was zero and zero. Image sharpness shouldn't have too big of an effect on the results, but noise reduction will. And I like that they give you the option in here. And then the big one that we're gonna be talking about a lot is this other toggle here for dynamic range expansion that you can turn off and on. And that's gonna be a big part of our dynamic range conversation. But let's move over and talk about the recording codecs as well, because as you can see here, I'm using ProRes 422HQ, but there's also an H.264 and a ProRes RAW option. Now I chose 422HQ because it's consistent on both modes on this gimbal and also with the 6K gimbal for when we wanted to compare the two. And I find it to be more consistent to do that than something like a ProRes RAW, which is dependent on a lot of other factors. Now jumping back to the dynamic range expansion toggle that we talked about a minute ago, this is basically a trade-off toggle that allows you to choose between higher dynamic range and better image quality or turning it off and then getting a faster rolling shutter, faster readout speed, but giving up some dynamic range. How much? Well, that's what our test results are gonna show and also how much rolling shutter is the improvement. However, if you install the 6K gimbal and sensor module onto this camera, the option disappears because it's not available for the 6K. It's only available for the 8K. So the button, the, the box just isn't there on the 6K. It's a bit confusing, but it's also cool that this is there. I've been asking for this on cameras for a really long time. Give me the option between speed and a slightly lower quality and then the best quality with a slower speed, and then I can choose what shooting scenario it's best for. So I love that they included it on this camera. Okay, dynamic range. If you've never seen a dynamic range test before, let me walk you through it. This is what we capture. This is the camera records a chart called the Xyla 21, which has all these different stops at different values. And we put it into software that can analyze it and give us sort of a score. And those results look like this. Now at the top, we can see what was recorded. So 8K equals 8K means that it was 8K footage on an 8K timeline. EI 800, because that's the native ISO. On, meaning dynamic range expansion was on. And then zero and zero refer to those image sharpness and noise reduction sliders. They're both in their default position. Now, if you look over here at slope-based DR, that's basically the total amount of stops that we captured, which is pretty much 15, which is probably what the cameras advertise as a 15 stop sensor. But then these other numbers here are based on noise, how much noise tolerance we have. And usually the 0.5 medium score is what we look at, which is a signal noise ratio of two, and this would be a reasonable amount of clean stops. So in this case, we're getting 15 stops total and 12.5 stops on the medium. Let's switch over to the EI 4000, which is the second native ISO on the 8K sensor when dynamic range expansion is enabled. And you can see we're getting pretty much the same result, which is good, 15.1 and 12.4. This tells us that it's a true, you know, dual ISO system and there's no funny business going on. We're gonna get similar results at both stages. And then I like to run a test with noise reduction turned all the way down so we can see if the camera has no assistance, what's the worst we're gonna get out of it. And in this case, again, 8K and 8K timeline, which is good to know because it means no oversampling is going on because oversampling also improves noise performance and increases your score. Still seeing 15 stops because that wouldn't change because it's not accounting for noise, but the medium score does change because there's no noise reduction. So we're only getting 11.8 stops, which is still pretty good. About 12 stops with no noise reduction. I'd be happy with that, knowing that with 
the sort of middle amount of noise reduction that a lot of mirrorless cameras have, we're getting 12.5. I think that's a good that's a good score. Now let's compare it to the EI320, which means dynamic range expansion is off. And we can see how much we're losing in dynamic range in order to speed up that sensor and get the better rolling shutter result. So as you can see, we lost about half a stop for total detected. We went from, from about 15 down to 14.4, and the medium went down to 12.2. Now what was impressive or kind of surprising here is that I thought we would lose a lot more based on how much the rolling shutter improved. And I'll tell you about that when we get to the rolling shutter section, but only losing about half a stop, I mean, that's acceptable in my opinion. Half a stop to drastically increase the rolling, to, to reduce the rolling shutter is, is very, very good. Okay, now let's talk about oversampling. I always like to run this test as well because personally, I don't really work with 8K timelines that much. I normally work with a 4K timeline. And I think a lot of other people do as well. So you shoot on this 8K sensor, and then what if you drop it into a 4K timeline? Well, now if you look at the top, you can see 8K on a 4K timeline. Again, EI 800, dynamic range expansion is on, noise reduction set to zero, which is the middle default option. We're still seeing about 15 stops, but our medium score jumped to the 12.9, or pretty much 13. So that's about half a stop improvement on the medium score. And I also ran it with noise reduction at minus two, and we went up to 12.5. That was 11.8 earlier, if you remember. So we're getting significant improvement dropping the 8K footage onto a 4K timeline. But you can do internal oversampling on the 8K sensor as well, and that is reflected here. It says 4K equals 4K. We're getting 15.5 stops total detected with 13.2 clean stops. But even if we turn the noise reduction down to minus two, we're still getting 13 stops. That's a really great result and a really nice combination of sort of a run and gun setup with the least amount of work required. But again, there are gonna be rolling shutter consequences for that combination because we have dynamic range expansion turned on. Now for comparison, we should probably look at the 6K sensor results as well because I wanna compare the rolling shutter between the new gimbal and the older 6K gimbal. So when I tested the 6K gimbal, again, EI800 with the noise reduction at zero, which is the middle one, 6K on a 6K timeline. We also saw 15 stops total. We did get a slightly better medium score though of 12.7. So default out of the box, it would appear that the 6K it will give you a slight bump on the medium score, but they're both seeing about 15 stops. And then if we run it with noise reduction at minus two, we're getting 12.2, which again is about a third of a stop better than the 11.8 that we saw on the 8K sensor when shooting 8K on an 8K timeline. But if you jump to oversampling, this is where the 8K sensor will pull ahead. The best I could see was this one here, which I got up to 12.9, but that's with noise reduction on zero. On this one, you can set the noise reduction down to minus two, and oversampling all the way from 8K down to 4K gets you 13 stops with noise reduction set all the way down. Let's talk about rolling shutter because that's what this is all about. That's what dynamic range expansion on and off, it was all about the rolling shutter benefits. Let's start with the 6K. I don't know why I'm pointing over here. There's no 6K over here, but this is 6K from now on, okay? So this first one here is 6K full frame on the 6K gimbal, obviously, and we're getting 20.3 milliseconds. And 20.3 is kind of a, a mediocre score, to be honest. It's, you know, not as fast as some stack sensors, but it's not as slow as like an A7 IV or something like that, where it's really jello-y. It's kind of in the middle ground. Some people will be annoyed by it, other people won't care. And if we switch to 4K oversampled, it's still 20.3, which makes sense and it kind of validates our earlier results because if you're reading out the 6K sensor, whether you're recording it to 6K or oversampling down to 4K, it should take the same amount of time. And you can see it does here. And then if you shoot uh, Super 35 on the 6K, which means you shoot 4K, without oversampling, you're basically just windowing in to 4K, 13.9 milliseconds, which is now in the passable territory of like, you know, it's good. It's like stacked sensors like a A1, you know, Z9. This is actually slightly better than those even. It's just only beaten by, you know, an A7S III or cinema cameras that can do single digits. But 13.9 is pretty good. Now let's look at the 8K sensor. And we'll start here with 8K full frame, with dynamic range expansion on. So that means again, between 24 and 30 frames per second with that toggle enabled. And you can see we get a rather slow result, 29.9 milliseconds. That's worse than the A7 IV I mentioned earlier. That's significantly slower than the 6K's 20 milliseconds. And this is now in the area where for some people in some situations, this would just be a problem. Shoot on a tripod or you shoot more static situations, it's not gonna matter. And in that case, you're definitely gonna wanna use it and get the better image quality. and if you look at the Inspire 3, which again is using the same sensor and has this mode forced on when at 30 frames per second or below, 
people, some people had an issue, some people didn't. If people are flying in a certain way, it, it doesn't matter. It's great that, you know, if you do a lot of panning, it might be an issue. However, if we switch to dynamic range expansion off, it drops significantly all the way down to 16.3 milliseconds, which is huge. This is so significant, it now actually beats the 6K sensor, which was getting, you know, 20 milliseconds. So the 8K gives you the option to be the higher image quality, the higher dynamic range, but a slower rolling shutter, or you can switch, not give up that much dynamic range, but then have the fastest rolling shutter option of the full frame sensor combinations. And then a couple more results to validate. This is 4K 60 full frame, I put dynamic range expansion not available because like I said, when you shoot above 30 frames per second, the toggle disappears. You don't have the choice anymore. And you can see we get 16.1, which is sort of that proof. People were doing this on the Inspire. They were shooting at 4K 60 to get a faster rolling shutter. It didn't really have a toggle for them. They just noticed that it was faster. And it's because this is what happens. You're basically turning off dynamic range expansion when you shoot above 30 frames per second. Then 4K Super 35, again, dynamic range expansion is not an option and it speeds up a little bit further still to 14.3 milliseconds. Let's go one step further and talk about the ISO range and noise and what it actually looks like. This is what I shot, the color checker chart. It's quite dark and we're gonna be zooming in down over in this corner here. So on the left, this is the 8K sensor with dynamic range expansion on. We know that because it's EI 800. The middle one is the 8K sensor with dynamic range expansion off. We know this because it's EI 320. And then the 6K sensor at its native, which is 800. Now let's jump ahead to the second native for each, which is 4,000 with, with dynamic range on, 1,600 with it off, and on the 6K sensor, it's 5,000. It's not that big of a difference between any of them, which is why it's so crazy that we can get such faster rolling shutter by turning that expansion mode off. I have a couple of theories is what it's doing. I'm not gonna share them because I don't know that they're right, and DJI hasn't told me probably because they got some secret sauce going on in here. But what I can say is that you don't even appear to really lose sharpness. There doesn't appear to be any real obvious cons at, say, nat native ISO. If we move up to here, though, this is now the maximum EI on the 8K with dynamic range on, which is 6400. This is sort of the matching version of that with dynamic range off at 2500. And then 6400 on the 6K. It is not the maximum on the 6K, though. And this could affect your, your use case and your purchase decision potentially. Here I wanted to show that even though the 8K doesn't have a 12,800 EI, you can shoot at 6400 and then just bump at a stop and post and it's still, maybe because of the 8K oversampling or whatever, it still actually looks a little bit better than the 12,800 that you can shoot properly on the 6K sensor. Compare them all, this is 6400 at a stop and post, 5,000 with dynamic range off and then 12,800 here. And looking at this one, the middle one is by far the worst. The 6400, I would say, plus a stop, beats the 6K at 12,800. We're seeing sort of what's what's being given up by turning off dynamic range expansion. So keep that in mind. Really, I suppose the, the place for the 6K here would be if you shoot in lower light and you need it fast, the 6K is the best combination there because while not as fast as dynamic range and expansion off on the 8K, it's faster than when it's on, and you need it to be on to beat the low light performance of the 6K. Okay, lastly, let's take a quick look at color. You can see the vector scope in the top left corner here, and it's excellent. Uh, this is the 8K with dynamic range expansion on. I'm really happy with the way this looks. I think the skin tones are good. I think all the colors are, are lining up really nice and accurately. I will say though, if I had to be nitpicky, that the magenta seems to be a little bit oversaturated, and I can see that on the chart as well. That's an easy fix though. You might want to, if you're trying to be perfectly accurate, you're going to want to reel in the magenta a little bit. But other than that, I mean, this image looks great. And uh, yeah, so color is not a concern for me on the 8K. So for my testing, I would say that the X9 8K really does provide a best of both worlds option for a Ronin 40 user. You have the option to switch to a faster readout mode, which is then even faster than the 6K without giving up as much dynamic range as I would have expected. And if you don't need the superior rolling shutter performance, enabling dynamic range expansion will give you the best image available on this system. And it will perfectly match the Inspire 3 if that's something that you could find useful. From a technical perspective, it's definitely the superior product. But to be fair, it's also quite a bit more expensive, which means that a budget conscious shooter could still confidently pick up the 6K sensor and know that they're getting a nice balance between image quality and readout speed for a lot less money, especially if they need to combine readout speed with low light performance. And both sensors offer Super 35 mode, 
if you need to speed up that readout even further.